Now is the perfect time to be looking at alternative non-Chromium based browsers. In this video, we'll be looking at Librable, a Firefox based browser with emphasis on privacy that removes a lot of the Firefox bloat and it comes with ad blocking built in. So here's the website. If we go to installation, we see that Librable is available for many different platforms. I'm going to go to Windows and we'll see there's multiple different ways that we can install Librable. Probably the easiest, most common method is with the manual installation. You can download the installer. You can also use Chocolatey, which we looked at in the last video to install Librable, as well as Winget. If you choose a manual installation, you will get this Windows protection warning here as Windows does not recognize the publisher of this executable. If you click on more info, you will get the option to run the executable anyway. However, I find the best method to install Librable is with Winget because you will be able to update Librable much easier. Librable does not come with an automatic updater. So whenever there's a new update, you will have to manually download and install the update. With Winget, you can simply use the Winget and update Librewolf from the command line. So we'll install Librewolf with Winget. We'll just copy this command, open our terminal, and paste the command in. Agree to the terms, yes, and LibreWolf will be installed on our system. You can see here it's being delivered to us from GitLab. We're downloading version 104. The package has been downloaded and it's now installing. Installation is complete. If we search for LibreWolf, We've got LibreWolf installed. We'll open it up for the first time. We can close the terminal. And here we are. The first thing you will notice right off the bat is we have DuckDuckGo as our default search engine. We have uBlock Origin installed by default. Obviously, you have a different looking icon. And we don't have pocket integration. So it's a really clean version of Firefox. There is syncing available, however. We'll look at that in settings. We go to settings. We'll see we have all the settings that we would usually see in regular Firefox. But what I want to point your attention to is under privacy and security. The enhanced tracking protection is turned on and is jacked up to enhance instead of standard. So right off the bat, we have enhanced protection set to the highest level. And we can see here a tab for LibreWolf itself. It has its own custom options. For example, updating add-ons automatically. We can enable Firefox Sync. This will require us to restart. Let's go ahead and do that. So I want to show you. With Sync now enabled, we can go ahead and log into our Firefox account. And we'd be able to sync all of our bookmarks and everything that like we would regular Firefox. We got some networking and privacy, additional settings, fingerprint and security settings. Uh, we can enable Google safe browsing and scan downloads. Down here we have a quick link to the about config so we can immediately modify our config and we can open the profile directory or folder like so. Of course, we have our extensions and themes. We have uBlock Origin already installed and we can install other add-ons and themes like normal. Google is stripped out of Librable for privacy reasons, but if you must have Google search, you can install it along with many other different search engines. Just click on find more search engines will take you to this page here. If you go to Minecraft projects, you will have various search engines that you can choose from. 
if you go to Google, you'll see a whole bunch of different search options, including various Google search options. I like the first one, Google No Pins, which is Google search without any Pinterest results. So what we'll do is show the second search box. We'll bring that up here. And we'll go ahead and add Google. And it's installed. Now if you go to settings, under search, you'll see Google No Pins or no Pinterest, as well as you will be able to select it from your default search. As mentioned earlier, the manually downloaded version of LibreWolf does not have an auto updater. To update, you will need to manually download the latest version. However, there's also no way for LibreWolf to tell you when there's updates as if you go to about, it just gives you the version and nothing else. So how do you know when it's time to update LibreWolf? Well, there's an add-on called the LibreWolf Updater. And this will notify you when there's a new update for LibreWolf. We'll go ahead and install that. Now, if we click here, we notice there's a check mark which tells us that our LibreWolf is up to date. If there is a new update, we'd see it and it would show up here or we be able to download it. When you install an update, it will not replace any of your settings. It will update just like Firefox would, where it simply updates the application but keeps everything like your bookmarks and settings the same. However, if you've installed LibreWolf from a package manager such as Chocolaty or Winkit, you can simply use the package manager to update LibreWolf. The command for Winkit update is going to be Winkit upgrade. So we would do Winkit upgrade LibreWolf. And this will update LibreWolf to the latest version. And we see no update found. So that's updating LibreWolf. So I want to talk about the pros and cons of LibreWolf. I like that it comes with uBlock Origin built in. That's pretty nice, although you could simply install that in any version of Firefox. But it is nice that it comes pre-installed. I like that it doesn't have the pocket integration. I don't like pocket built into my browser like it is in Firefox. So it's nice that that is completely stripped out. I also love the fact that it still has Firefox sync, which is an absolute must for me. So syncing is still possible with this fork of Firefox. I also like some of the custom settings that's built into LibreWolf, such as the automatic updates of add-ons. I like these useful links here for the config. And overall, I just like how simplistic and light LibreWolf is in comparison to Firefox proper. I also love that the enhanced protection comes at the highest level. However, that brings me to some of the cons of LibreWolf. There is no way to lower this protection, I don't believe, which means a lot of websites might break or won't work properly and you'll have to end up doing something like turning off the protection when you go to a certain site to make sure that it works properly. For example, if the Huffington Post wasn't acting correctly, we would have to go to Shield and then turn off the enhanced protection entirely. We'd still have uBlock Origin, but still, the tracking would be turned off. So just keep in mind that some websites might not work correctly with the enhanced protection. Another drawback is the way LibreWolf updates. Since it doesn't have an automatic update system, you have to rely on your package manager or manual downloads to update LibreWolf. This can be a turnoff to some people. 
not a big deal to me, but just something to make note of. Also, Libra Wolf will always be a step behind uh, Firefox. Notice we're running 104 here. Because this is a fork, it will take longer for Firefox proper updates to reach Libra Wolf. And my last concern here is with the amount of contributors. I don't know if these are all the contributors, but these are at least the core contributors. And there's just a couple of people, which isn't a bad thing, but just something to point out as well. It's only a handful of people contributing to this project. Besides all of that, I really am liking LibreWolf. I think it's a pretty cool concept, and given what's happening with the browser space right now, with a certain browser, I think now more than ever is a time for people to start switching and using alternative browsers, especially Firefox-based browsers. Mm -hmm.